the past two to three weeks in energy trade has been highly unusual. We've seen eight consecutive days where the market opened in one color and then transitioned into another color. That's fine once in a while, you know, stock opens green and goes red or is red and goes green, not a big deal. To see that eight consecutive days is unusual, particularly when many of those days, the stock would be up or down over 1% and then switch. That indicated to us that something was going to occur. And given that energy stocks were already 20 or 30% down off their earlier highs, yet the price per barrel had remained steady, steady at levels from their highs, it seemed like the next move was only going to be up. A move down was unlikely, um, at least in my opinion. The fundamentals have improved beyond that, beyond just the price per barrel. We expect it to continue going up. There's a whole host of reasons we've talked about in previous videos. Today, we're going to talk about what's happening right now because let's get to, you know, be prepared, strapped in, whatever we got to do. So it's been a very unusual two to three weeks of trading, technical stuff. I'm not a technicals guy, I'm a fundamentals guy, but I will look to the technicals to help guide me. Eight days, consecutive days where that happens. On the ninth day, Monday, we see quite a strong route. Yesterday, we saw a cool off, a sell off. Might have made people second guess that rally, but if you watched yesterday's video, we did not second guess that rally. And yesterday, or that sell off, and yesterday indicates the dynamics for the move from here. Up until this point, we had seen panic selling, people concerned about Delta, people questioning the fundamentals and selling the stock. And when there's a panic sell, volume of trading is above average volume. However, that was not the case in yesterday's sell. Yesterday was about 20% below average volume. After a day where you saw a five, four or 5% move, if there were any ever a time to have a panic sell, it would be that. But the move that we experienced was nothing like a panic sell. It was a low volume cool off. People trying to see, hey, am I gonna get another chance to buy into this? Should I just wait? You know, I'm getting a little bullish. Should I just wait? You know, a lot of waiting. Then we saw today's move. But the important thing about not seeing a panic move yesterday was that it indicates the panic sellers are washed out. And they're the only people who should be selling energy right now because it is 30% or so off where it should be given the price per barrel of oil. And the price per barrel of oil looks to be heading even higher. So given that there are no serious sellers, we've got 30% to catch up in the price per barrel and the price per barrel is expected to continue to improve. We should expect a pretty strong and significant rally in energy stocks today. So I'm remaining in the position. I encourage you to remain in the position. Um, this is uh, where I happen to be parking my and my client's capital. And I feel very good about this. I feel like the fundamentals are very much in our favor. We've seen a sell-off, so I'm not concerned about a sell-off as some people are in the broader market. Now, we saw a pretty strong rally into the close today. We uh, were down a little bit. Let me just say this before I get into what I'm going to talk about with Mega Cap Tech. I think energy does well regardless of what happens with the broader market picture. Now, it's entirely possible the market continues to run, right? We have tremendous liquidity. One can argue that mega cap tech stocks are undervalued um, given the amount of liquidity in the market and given how much money they have been printing as of late. I happen to be short Apple. Um, and I wouldn't be too excited about any stock that I don't believe presents tremendous growth. Not saying Apple's a bad company. I'm not. Again, as I said yesterday when I added the short position, recording this on an iPhone, iPhone 12 Pro, not an iPhone 12, a 12 Pro. 
I have an iPad Pro, the newest one. I have a MacBook Air with the M1 chip. So I am all in, Apple products are great. But the stock is at a very historically expensive multiple. It has benefited from the pandemic. However, I'm expecting pre-pandemic trends to return. You know, we're all gonna be working from home, but um, you know, I don't think the car boom is gonna last forever. I think people bought their cars and they have their cars and now they're gonna take the foot off the gas a little bit with buying their cars. I think the same thing with tech products. Apple, I hope, and I believe, but I hope, has stopped doing the thing where they ruin our batteries. Um, so maybe there's gonna be some sort of phenomenon like there is in the car market where everyone had just bought their tech. Great, the stock has done well, they produced a lot of cash. But now, people gotta enjoy their tech and use their tech until revolutionary, you know, big time improvements are made or not Apple improvements are made, software improvements are made and we need more chip capacity to take advantage of that so those software improvements. So I expect a little bit of a lull in Apple sales. They already kind of warned us about this the last quarter. So I'm maintaining my Apple short. Uh, I will maintain it if the market rises. If Apple rises significantly, I will probably add to this short. Um, I love Apple. Again, I love Apple. I'm an Apple user. I think the products will continue, but I think Apple is in a basket of many other stocks. There's many other stocks I could pick from. The only reason why I chose Apple was it seems like a pretty solid case. And I'm not at all concerned about a short squeeze in Apple. It's too big of a stock to get a short squeeze. I haven't shorted a stock since GSX and I got short slash G-O-T-U. And I got short squeezed in that. I rode the short squeeze out, but I got short squeezed in that before GameStop stuff happened. So now that that's the thing, I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna go there. So, um, I'm, I'm short Apple and I wouldn't, I don't have any exposure to other expensive tech stocks. What I do have exposure to is what I define as growth stocks. I do not define Fang as growth stocks. Tesla, fine, it's a growth stock for now. But at some point, the valuation is gonna be so big that it's not a growth stock. What I wanna see in a growth stock is something valued less than $1 billion to less than $15 billion. I really wanna say less than 10. But I got a couple names that are in the 10 billion kind of range that are severely growth stocks that I think get to 100 billion. 10x multiple stocks that can go 10 times from where they are now. That is what I define as a growth stock, not Apple. I don't think Apple is getting to 20 trillion anytime soon. And if they do, it's gonna be on a very slow and steady pace. But I don't see, I don't see myself buying 20 times more iPhones, tw 20 times more MacBook Pros, or 20 times, or MacBooks, or 20 times more iPads. And while I do expect the Apple market to continue to grow to some extent, particularly internationally, I don't expect that to grow 20 times. So, or 10 times even. So I'm sticking with the stocks that I view as growth stocks, and I'm sticking with the incredibly undervalued, underpriced, but incredibly strong fundamentally stocks, like the energy stocks, to create my portfolio construction. So that's how I'm positioned. And until next time, peace out.